So one more thing I forgot is to add uh, something here to display when there is uh, some unread messages, okay? So that can be very difficult to do because if we come to our table, we'll see that uh, we know when a message was seen and when it wasn't seen. So at this point, we can use this to put some stuff there. Okay, so let's come back here and create uh, a query of sorts. So here I will go to, to index.php, right? Right here where there's a set interval function. Uh, if we come back to our chat here, we only want this to happen when contacts, we are on this page right here. And not when we are on this page, but when we are here. So let me right click and inspect the element because I want to see what it's actually radio contacts that we have to check to see if it's checked to know that we are here. So right here where there's a set interval where we are checking for whether we are on the chat section here, we can simply copy this. Let me do this here, duplicate that. So we don't need to know the, the current uh, user at the moment, so we can just remove that. I just want to know if radio contacts, sorry, contacts is checked, that's it. So if it is checked, then let's get some data here. And also I should declare it here, radio contacts, that is completely wrong like that okay great now we should look for uh, w because we already created the get data that goes out and gets our uh, get chats I think that's what it's called or let me just search for get data here I think the functions are right at the top here right so that's get contacts. This is the one right there. That's the one I want. So I'm going to copy that. And so what I'm simply doing here is telling it to refresh the contacts every five seconds, just like it refreshes the view there. It will refresh the contacts every five seconds to check if there's a new message there or not. So the only thing we need to do now is to go to the api.php actually not that it's actually contacts.php inside includes and just include that checking for uh, checking for new messages now let's create the visual first so here as you can see there's just an image there so what i can do is inside this div i could add uh, let me add a style first i'm just going to say uh, position relative this is important because i want to put uh, another div inside here which will have a position of absolute now if i don't put this relative it means whatever dimensions i put let's say if i put 0 comma 0 as the location of the box uh, if i don't put relative it's going to go there if i put relative it will come here but let me show you what i'm talking about so right here i will put a box at the very end a div of sort and I will just put some styles right here I will say uh, style I'm going to say uh, width mm. let's try uh, 70 pixels height same thing 70 pixels okay and then border radius to make it um, to make it round border radius, I will say 50%. And then I'll have a background color. And this background color will be, let's try orange. And then the color itself inside for the text will be white. And then let me just put a number in there like zero. Right, and also I obviously need to add the position absolute position absolute, and then I will say 
left zero right zero so i'm positioning it right at the top uh the top left corner here so let me redo that oh it was supposed to be there okay so this is the idea but uh, these guys are way way too big so instead of all those 70s let's try 20. let's see what we got okay something like that we, i think you get the picture now then let me just move it up there so the left where is this left oh it's not supposed to be right it's supposed to be top here my bad so it's left and top ah so now what i was talking about if is I, if i remove the relative here position relative uh it will have a very different effect or will it oh this thing is proving me wrong but let's see what we do here let me try zero pixels maybe that's the reason why i'm not seeing a change there left and top absolute position oh that's actually here this is my bad position full call on there absolute so let's try and refresh this again so now you see the position uh zero comma zero is right here and sometimes right there so this is not what i want i want it to be here and there like that so to do that i need to have this position relative on the parent div active so let's try that and as you can see now there's a zero at the top corner there so that zero can show whether the messages have their new messages or not but the problem now is because we added our um, animation here okay we added an animation here uh, it has to animate every time so how you can fix this is one maybe you i think the only way to fix it is to remove the animation so contact here oh there we go so the animation is right at the top there keyframes and all that so i just need to change the name of this or just delete that part okay so let me refresh this and contacts there we go that way we don't see any movement when these things are refreshed it looks like it's static but then the numbers will be able to change uh, when we have new messages so let's come back here and add some more stuff so first of all uh, let me set this to a variable i'm going to have this variable here called um, what will this be called let's just say new messages is new message is equal to false right so this will determine whether I show this thing, this part here or not. So this whole div here, let's put that inside uh, inside a variable. Okay, so at the end here, I will close this up. And then right here as well, I'm going to just say my data. Point equals, so I can add to my data. And I will do exactly the same thing here and then close it over there. So what I've done is I've just separated these, that, that, and that so that I can put a condition when to show this or not. So I remo remove the wrapping of words so that this is one line. I'm going to say if uh, a new message, right? If new message, then... Uh, we're going to show it there so new message itself is going to contain the total number of messages so i'm just going to put it right there boom as part of it like so okay so how do we determine if there are some new messages uh easy peasy we just need to read from the database so let me come back here and say if there are any users then let's go ahead and check for new messages like that so now we're not checking new messages from just one user we're checking from all users here that involve uh, ourselves 
So first of all, what we will check for is look for anywhere where uh, the current user is the recipient, is the receiver, and the messages are unseen, okay? Or let's see here. I think seen and received. I think it's where the messages are and received here. Okay. Yeah, unreceived messages. I think that's more robust than seen. That could be annoying. So let's create a query right there. So I'm just going to say query is equal to select all from messages where first of all the receiver is equal to we're just going to say uh create a new variable called me uh, that could be anything and received is equal to zero right the message is unreceived equal to zero that's it so then the thing is, uh, these messages could be many, okay? There could be several of those messages and we need to know who the sender is. That's the uh, the person we are supposed to, to add to. Now, in order to know how many messages there are, we're supposed to group them. We need to group them by number of messages because for example, if let's say these two messages are unseen and maybe this one. So the sender here is different to this one so we'll group them by uh, the sender. So if we if we group them using MySQL, it's just going to return one result per sender, and we won't know exactly how many messages are unread or unreceived. But we can group them ourselves. So let me let me come back here. Where is the database read? That's the one right here. So database read, boom. So query there, let's put that query over there. Me will be in quotes, and then I'm going to set it to, I'll say me is equal to server. I think it's server user ID, if I'm not mistaken, like that. That's me right there. So if receiver is me, and received is zero, then read from those. Now it's not going to be my users. We can just going to say my messages like that, a short for that. So if this is array, so let's copy that there. If this is an array, we're going to go through that. Okay. And also this new message. Mm -hmm. Let me just set this one. I'll just say um, maybe messages like that is equal to, let's set it to an empty array like so. Okay. So what I will do here, I'll check for this one. If this one is an array, and if it is, let me do a loop through. So copy that and let's just change our values here. Oops, let me copy this. Put it there. Row, uh, let's just put a two just to differentiate it. And now what I want to do is get all the messages and bundle them. So here I'm going to get messages like so. Put it there, messages. And now here, I need to get the sender. That's important. So sender is equal to row to sender. So I want to know who sent this message, right? So I'll get this, put it in, the, in there as a... Okay, so whatever the sender ID is, that's what will be the value for our memory location. And then in there, we're going to add uh, a one. So we want to count how many messages there are, right? 
So sender is equal to that and then count, right? Now, we the next time we come around, if we find another message from the same sender, we simply add to it, okay? So it is important here to have to check and say if is set. So if this is already set, let's check, boom. Uh, let me do this, duplicate that, do one else. And bring it here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm checking if it is set. If it's not set, then set it to one. If it is set, just uh, add to it like so. So if it's set, add to it. If it's not, set it to one. That's uh, simple enough. The sender. Okay, great. So what we'll end up with is that messages will have the user ID uh, as memory locations, which will have values of the number of messages from those people. Okay. Now, the second thing is we need to confirm if... Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's already confirmed where I received. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So once we have that out of the way, all I need to check here is to come here and say... If, um, hmm, I would say if new messages, actually, so this becomes, uh, that would probably be irrelevant. Where is this? Do, 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 do. Ah, okay. So this becomes irrelevant, this new message. Okay, so I'll remove that one there. So what I'm going to check for is if count, okay, if the number of items in messages is greater than zero and the current contact, which is in row, okay, the current user here, who is this one? That's row user name right there, okay? Copy that. And if, um, if is set, So instead of username, it's user ID here. Now it's not in rows, it's in here. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, I created an array, not an object. So I have to do this instead. Bam. Okay, so the question becomes if there were any messages found that's one thing so if it's uh, greater than zero and if it is set so actually here i have to change this it should be in there oh my bad copy that out and then put user id here so we're looking for the current user's id right so if that id is part of the array in here okay then it means we have some messages from that person and so i'm just going to copy this whatever the value of this is at this point will be the number of messages so let me just uh, break out of this put dot dot and then paste like that hmm so if we save this and come back here, we'll see that uh, none of them is showing, So, uh, which is pretty good. But now let me try and send a message to from this one, Peter. So Peter here is in, I have this other window here where I can send a new message. So I'll just say new message and let's see what happens. So I've sent a message through there. And let's look at Peter here for a second. Okay, so we are not getting any of that. So let me go to my uh, database here and check to see if uh, we are correct. So there is received, which is zero there. And there's one where we are the receiver here. So receiver, so things seem to be working well here. 
So let me try and simply remove this part and see what happens. Okay, let's come back here for testing purposes. Click. So nothing happens there. So let's try and just put one there. If one, that that's always true. So let's come back just to confirm that uh, things are working. And it seems things are not actually working. So let me right click in there and inspect the element. So maybe we have some errors. And what do you know, we do have some error. So I'll undo here a little bit so that we can deal with the error. So I'll go to index.php and let's find the function handle result. Where is it? Oh, there we go. So let's just alert ourselves to what's going on here. So I just say alert result. And then let me come back here, refresh the page. Bam, bam, we have to get through those, bam. Okay, so there we go. So notice undefined index user ID on line 32. So let's go to line 32 in contacts here. 32 right there. Oh, this is my bad. This is supposed to be session and not server. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. Silly mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have another thing. Fatal error and uh, uncaught error cannot use object of type class as an array on line 39. So where is line 39? Yeah, okay. So we're trying to use this as an array, but it's an object so let's do that instead okay uh, that should sort the problem out so let's come back see another error so now that we have brackets there and brackets there it means we are returning proper json so we can go back to index and remove since we have no more errors refresh the page and there we go. So we see there's one message there from this guy. Pretty cool. So let me try and uh, send a new message again. New, new message. So let's see if we're going to get two over here. And there we go. So you see there's a two now, which means there's two messages unread from this guy. So let me go and click that message in there. Okay, so I've received those two messages and let me come back to contacts and the message thingy is gone. Okay, so great. Uh, that's one more addition to the chat live chat app. Hopefully you've learned something and I will see you in more tutorials.